My reaction to the Helena Kennedy report is is a mixed mixed bag. I feel very, very proud. I feel very proud of Claire. And I feel very proud of those that uh, have come forward. Um, and I feel proud of those of us that fought for this to be an independent inquiry when the TSSA wanted to have an internal investigation along the likes of the grievances that we've already all had to endure. And after they took Claire Laycock and Real News to the High Court to try and injunct them. But within all of that, I feel very tired and I feel very sad. I feel angry, but I feel more tired and sad that we had to endure it for that long. The statement that's put out, there's no apology in that statement. These people have shown no commitment whatsoever to right any wrongs, to learn from any wrongs and to protect women in their organisation. Initially, my feeling is one of relief because we're all vindicated. The report shows that all of us were telling the truth and that colleagues before us were telling the truth and have been for years. Every time we were called too sensitive or too emotional or liars or that we were bringing the trade union movement into disrepute, all of that has been shown to be part of the abuse and the harm and the complicity within that organisation. I particularly was told in my final meeting with Frank Ward that I hadn't been harassed and I hadn't been offered money to leave. We haven't brought the trade union movement to distribute. They have. We were on the right side of history and they're on the wrong side. And so they have to live with that now. Former colleagues have approached me since, since I left to tell me about what happened to them. And there are still things in the report that I knew nothing about. There was a report done on the TSSA and its culture by two researchers from the University of the West of England, which was suppressed by Frank Ward and the leadership of the TSSA. They received the report in September, as far as we know. In fact, we know that the two researchers couldn't get in touch with anybody at the TSSA to start their work. And they ended up getting in touch with Women in Focus, the women's group within TSSA. We only had sight of it a couple of days after the Helena Kennedy report came out. It said all of the same things and was just as damning. I want to to encourage people to to reflect and and not be scared to um admit they've made mistakes i've made some i've not always behaved well you know there's there's that that's okay it's about how you repair and it's about how you commit to to not doing that again the perpetrators the enablers and all those that are pretending that they're really shocked that sat there and listened to comment after comment you know helen has spoken about um uh the spectrum right and this all sits within a violent spectrum of violence against women and girls and one create a culture for another the bravery claire has shown may that be an example to everyone else that told us we need to let it go and those that are you know remain too scared the, the men in particular who remain too scared to say i saw that there are people that were around for a very long time who i think need to reflect on their role and have the courage to have those conversations um and then there are other people that worked at tssa that stood shoulder to shoulder with Manuel with Luke Chester, with Frank Ward, with Lorraine Ward, um, and have said nothing, who are now in positions of leadership. Sean Jones and Nadine Ray were members of the senior management team. It is insulting to, su to suggest that Nadine Ray and Sean Jones can continue to be at the TSSA and lead that organisation. If they stay there with the staff reporting to them, more harm will be done and it will be a continuation of the fiefdom that has just been discredited. I know for a fact that Nadine Ray knew exactly what was going on. Nadine Ray was Claire Laycock's manager. I decided to break my NDA and film a video with Real News.
Sean Jones wrote a response referring to me as a disgruntled former employee. There was no acknowledgement of what she knows happened, what she knows to be true. And then she took me and Real News to court and tried to ruin us. The president, who has resigned, was allowed to get on stage and say, oh, we've heard about these scandalous things. It's with our lawyers. Mick Carney, you having a giggle, mate? And that was allowed from the head of comms. There's a political officer who's now a Labour MP, Sam Tarry, not said a word, but chose to go and speak at their conference the day after Claire's video. And I would just say to Sam Tarry, I challenged you about that in December 2022. And you said to me, what do you mean I was doing that for the TSSA members? Um, What do you mean? What do you want me to do? Lie? I never saw anything. I really hope you've read the report. And I hope you see yourself quoted in that report of what you said to me on more than one occasion. My message to the EC is to listen to us. There has been no communication to me to you women. I also think there should be some effort to reach out to former staff. I don't just mean me. I mean former staff that have left. You know you know who they are because there's been no attempt at that so far. There are numerous staff that were forced out of their jobs that fought for us to get this far, that had the bravery and courage to speak out. We found out that Manuel Cortez didn't retire. Frank Ward wrote a retirement message to him on the TSSA website and said that he had retired, wished him a happy retirement. Manuel Cortez is still there. He's still being paid. And from what I understand, he was due to receive a large payoff. What opportunity are members going to have to ask questions? What opportunity are members going to have to see the finances? If you want to be truly democratic and you want to be truly member-led, then you have to enable that. Um, Alongside that, again, about being regenerative and restorative, is to create a space for survivors, for those that witnessed, for those that spoke, for those that fought, to, to, to be heard. And I think the inquiry did that, don't get me wrong. But I think there's potentially some space here around, like, thinking about repair, There are others that like colluded with management that I think there could be conversations with about that deep harm. And I would only I would hope that that could be, yeah, regenerative rather than punitive. We know that there are talks ongoing between the TSSA and the GMB regarding a merger. That's very concerning to me and others. The GMB, even following the Monaghan report and her recommendations, is by no mean re- no means reformed. It's not a safe place for women to work still, and female officers are being sacked from their posts now for organising. I was pleased to see that the TUC didn't need a lot of prompting to put out a statement. But I do have an issue with the Paul Novak statement. It invites and is excited about having a conversation with the TSSA. Well, that's what you tried to do back in April. In April, when Claire did her her video, Francis O'Grady, TUC leader at the time, met the TSSA before she spoke to any survivors, including Claire. And it was deeply insulting, and, and it was about who you centre and who you don't centre. That could be an open call out, that could be through me to you women, and also, you know, you could speak to staff. Um, but you could also speak to the internal group at TSSA, um, Women in Focus. And I also think the TUC has to be talking about how these sorts of inquiries need to happen across the movement. The amount of women and people of colour that leave our trade union movement as a result of, like, institutional racism and misogyny that's not okay that's not something you bury you deal with it you face it head on and then you only get better and you only get stronger this has an implication for the whole movement and other sisters in the movement this is our opportunity to clean up to clean house this has been a long process it's been hard but it's the beginning there's a moment of reckoning and i say that because i only want to see trade unions flourish I only want to see trade unions get stronger. The trade union movement has a lot to fight against. And we have the most regressive trade union laws and they're about to get a hell of a lot worse under this Tory government. 
um, with an opposition that are likely to not try and revoke them, right? We have a lot to fight. But in order to fight that, we have to have a trade union movement to be able to fight back. And we don't when we're hemorrhaging people as a result of our own internal harm and pain.